Hey, you too, man. Well, it's uh, another beautiful day on the plains. We've had some uh, outstanding weather, and um, Saturday's uh, practice was, uh, I've been really pleased with the, the energy and passion that, uh, starting with our staff and with the players, I think that's, they're batting about 100 on that with the, uh, in this new Tuesday, Saturday, let's get after it, and Thursday, teach uh, format that we've kind of gone through this spring. And, you know, so we're left with two more opportunities to do that and excited to see what we do today in our competition periods and um, then teach a lot Thursday. And then Saturday, obviously, uh, go into, into the stadium in Jordan-Hare and not sure exactly uh, how to judge that. Um, I know both sides will kind of – be particular about what they're doing, and um, and you hope to stay healthy and safe. And you're excited to, about our our recruits that will be here, and and all of our fans that may come. But it's it's typically a day you don't you try to get out of healthy and and don't show too much on on either side. But um, and play a lot of these young kids. So hopefully uh, we can get through this week healthy. We've been beat up. Uh, considerably at the receiver position. That's that's caused us a little slowdown in some of the things we're trying to do. But um, other than that, we're pretty healthy. So been pleased with the energy and passion and uh, and love the, the things I see from our staff and a lot of our players. I think the, the, the leadership of the team has been good in holding us accountable to the standards that we set back in January. And um, I think that's been probably what I'm most pleased with the progress with and um, excited about uh, finishing up this week and continuing to recruit. How much one-on-one -on -one have you been able to do and, and what's the plan for Saturday as far as, you know, splitting squads? and One-on-one uh, -on -one as far as uh, DBs and, oh, ones against ones every day, every, every Tuesday and Saturday we've it's been ones on ones, or I, we don't like to really say ones on ones. We say blue and orange and, and white, and uh, you're constantly rotating people at some positions for sure. And um, but we're gonna do good on good in spring all the time. And Saturday, I think the again, I, I'm I honestly started to turn this over to you guys and just let the media decide, but. Chances are you put all of y'all in the room, y'all couldn't come to a, con a consensus either, just like a coaching staff. So um, I just – I think the easiest format, we went through everything in the world from, you know, two first downs, get you this. And I said, I, that's, I can't do all that. And so we're just – we're putting 27 to nothing on the scoreboard defense and, um, and, and let's go play and see how vary the field positions – um, and and see what happens, you know, see if the offense can overtake the, the defense at 27 to nothing. Obviously, if, if the defense were to have a pick six or something, they would add to their – or block field goal for a return, or they would they would return – they would add to that. But um, barring they don't do that, it's 27 to nothing and see if the, the offense can score 28 in the, in the time allowed. Hugh, you mentioned the receiving core. Who are the guys that have been that have been beat up? Yeah, real? been without Jay Fair and Caleb Wooten and um, Camden Brown um, for the better part of the last two weeks. Uh, I think I'm missing. Oh, and Coy Moore. So all the all the all the returning guys that that have played some snaps have been uh, have been out. I think we'll get Jay back this week and and Caleb. I don't know about Camden and Coy yet, but uh, I think we'll get those two back. You just, just What have you seen from quarterback-wise through the group after now that you've had a chance to have some kind of scrimmage situations? Uh, they absolutely have improved from week one to now. Um, they're processing uh, the expectations we have uh, pretty well, um, taking care of the ball much better than week one uh, for sure. 
Um, I think the uh, competition between uh, Hank and Holden uh, and Peyton has been really good. Um, Walker has got an incredible arm strength. Obviously, is a, a freshman and swimming a bit with a lot of the things that he's seeing from the defense. Um, there's a lot of a lot of different looks that uh, that our defense gives. But excited about you know what he can be also. But like the competition that we're seeing there. Uh, Coach, last year the weather kind of put a damper on A day, so you didn't throw the ball very much. Um, kind of run pass ratio you're expecting on Saturday and are you guys going to be using a running clock this year or are you going to play Yeah, I think uh, it's uh thing is four 10 minute clocks and we'll we'll see how that goes with the TV time and and how the game's going. I'm sure we'll stop it some. Um but I think it's it's probably going to be four 10 minutes and stop it maybe the last 2 minutes of each quarter or and play it like normal uh, from there. But uh that's kind of up in the air. I kind of changed my mind on that, see how it's going. Run pass ratio, I, I don't, uh, it's hard to say. Um, when you're, if we run our base offense, you know, I don't know if it's going to be thrown or, or handed off, you know, half the time. Um, you know, I was showing a, a quarterback recruit we had here the other day. You know, he was standing with me during a red ball. And um, I said, uh, you know, we just threw for 90 yards on two drives and we didn't call a single pass play. And uh, I said, that's the kind of offense you want to play in. And so, so it's hard for me to really tell, um, you know, what the, what the run pass ratio will be. But I don't mind throwing it. We are really thin at receiver right now, which you know, we'll see how we are come Saturday. Um, it'll help a lot if Jay and Caleb can, can be back for sure. Um, you know, where you're not having to wear those guys out. But um, I, sur I certainly wouldn't mind throwing it around some if we can protect us. That's been the biggest challenge against what we're seeing defensively. Those, those guys are getting after us pretty good. Coach, when you go into a spring game, spring practice, whatever you want to call it, for, for a day, as the head coach, what are your expectations going into it? And then when you, you know, go back in on Saturday night, Sunday morning, what, what are your expectations for this sort of a day? Well, number one, you hope for great weather for the fans and that, um, that they can enjoy getting on campus and being around each other and that we would be um, clean in our operations. Um, uh, Y'all have heard me talk about before how this is tough on on getting a lot out of the day, um, but you know it is what it is, and it's, it's it's right for for everybody at Auburn. So we're gonna make the best of it, and we're gonna go compete. And I think our kids will do that and and do it passionately. Now, are the guys that I limit their snaps probably so um, that you know about and you know what they can do. We'll probably limit some of those guys. Um, but other than that, it's, it should be a minute. We want to make it a competitive day that uh, we – that you don't want to see flags all over the field. That, that would irritate me. Um, and you just – you know, you want, to, you want to play clean and you want to execute fairly well on both sides. You don't want to go out there and it's 27 to nothing and the offense doesn't get a first down the whole day. That would be discouraging. Um, so you're hoping that you, you just see some good execution from each side and a lot of competition and, and taking pride in competing each snap and stay healthy. Hugh, you obviously want your guys to stay healthy, but how much has the, the injuries at receiver kind of been something beneficial to get more snaps for guys like Cam and Bryce and, and Robert transferring? And what have you seen from those guys, you know, yeah. being, being the healthy ones out there? Uh, excited about Robert and Sam. Sam's another one. He's been in a yellow jersey all spring because of his shoulder, but surgery. Uh, um, so, but excited when I do see him, uh, he and Robert. I think they're going to add quality depth to us. Uh, Bryce is uh, going to be a talented, talented kid. Um, yet to see kind of, you know, where he'll fit in year one. I mean, it's a, it's a process. You know, very few people are just ready-made and walk in and, and play in this league, and I, I want our young men to understand that, and that doesn't mean they're not really, really good. But uh, Cam, on the other hand, is is, 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 is a different 
the cat, you know, he's going to have to play, and he's uh, proved he can. When he knows what to do, he's uh, very, very good. And we've got to do a great job of bringing him along and making sure he understands techniques and the system more and more. But he's so coachable, that's going to be easy. And uh, he just continues to make plays. Um, he's going to – he's got to go as a, as a freshman. And we'll be excited to get Perry and Malcolm in to, to give us some, some additional depth in that room. Hugh, you mentioned that defensive line doing a good job here in spring. What have sort of been the individual parts of that you've been pleased with? Because that was a group, obviously, that lost, lost Marcus and lost Justin. Yeah, we miss Marcus and Justin for sure. Um, you know, and I think inside is, is where we're still a little thin that uh, we'll be looking, you know, maybe for some portal help uh, there. Um, but you need Jason Jones to come on and continue to improve along with Gage and Trill. You know, those are the three guys inside that have – have played, you know, decent snaps. Um, then behind them, you've got to have, you know, people like Bobby and and uh, DJ Reed and Blockton, all young kids, you know, come on pretty fast to give you the needed depth inside there. Uh, the ends, you know, I mean, J-Mac is dynamic. Got to keep him healthy and hope he stays healthy throughout the year, but really, really pleased with his work ethic and the way he practices and – and goes after it, and 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 obviously Keldrick, we're extremely pleased with, and need uh, you know Z to come on behind him to give us quality depth there, and then um, really excited about Amaris and Waller. I mean, those, those freshmen are going to be they're really talented, and um, probably going to have to play significant snaps, you know, in year one. T.J. Lindsey's another one that I think's got a huge ceiling. Um, tinkering with moving him inside if he doesn't um, play behind Keldrick and him at the end position. He, he might could be a swing guy. He's getting bigger. Um, just not sure there yet, but excited. Love his work ethic. Um, I think he's twitchy and, and going to have a – he's going to be a really good player. Hugh, Saturday specifically, what, what are some things you liked – and didn't like from Saturday's scrimmage. And then also, you know, you've sort of talked about not quite knowing if it's good. Does that mean it's bad? Yeah. Do you feel like you have a better understanding of this team to know if it's good, that it's good or bad? Yeah, on the other I side? thought the uh, Tuesday, we had competition Tuesday and offense dominated Tuesday. And defense did not like that at all. I thought they responded well Saturday, dominated the, uh, the move the ball portion. Um, then we went to um, the red zone competition. Uh, offense gets a field goal, that's three points, and defense gets four for a stop for a field goal. So it's, and you played 18. Um, obviously, a score is a score. Um, a, uh, and that was really competitive. Uh, that was good to see the offense bounce back a little bit, but defense still edged them out in that competition. Then we went two minute drill, and offense uh, had need to have a touchdown in both, and they responded to, with two touchdowns. So I thought um, to see the defense fairly dominate the um, the early portion of of the things, but the offense never. There's times you you can leave a practice and, and say, man, they just never responded, and that's more scary than the the fact that they got it stuck to them pretty good early on. I thought our guys responded, which was really good to see uh, them com compete in that. So there was a few too many flags for us. We were really handsy in the defensive, and then uh, we got called for quite a few holds that really. It's hard to say how bad you got dominated when you know when you when you get behind the chains, man. It's just it's just brutal, uh, particularly when you got shorthanded at receiver and you're not you really don't have your whole offense in. It's hard even if you have all of that, and that happened to us way too much in the move the ball portion. But uh, it was good to see the competition and energy was off the charts good, and uh, the coaches got after each other a little too much. Got to sell that down. <laughs> It was good, though. It was all in good fun. But um, I thought the, it was just good competition, but it was really good to see the, the offense kind of – it did not go their way 
uh, very well at all at early, but they finished very, very strong. You, you go back to quarterback a little bit. I know you, you talked about how hard it is to get four guys reps. Yep. Much like, What are you looking for to maybe start to separate in terms of at least a pecking order to kind of give you an idea of heading into August? And what do you need to see from the – I'm sure Peyton's experience has him. In yeah, the, Peyton's going to be in it, it. It's going to, you know, it's going to be hard to say. I mean, as excited as we are about Walker, um, you know, the other three are getting the majority of the reps probably come fall camp. Um, you know, but uh, I'm really excited about Walker too. So we'll see. It's going to be hard to get four. We've gotten, we've done a good job getting them a bunch of reps in spring. It's probably hurting, hurt Peyton some because he hadn't gotten as many as. But we feel like he'll, he'll, he'll be fine come fall camp. Um, but we really need to solidify who's really competing for the starting job, thus being the backup. With, with whichever way that goes by fall camp and probably have to do that a week into fall camp, no more. Coach, will you do mostly ones, ones, and twos, twos in the A-Day game or will you mix it up a little bit? Uh, we're we're going to play and uh, on the headsets, I'll say, hey, this is the, the orange group going out here, majority, um, blue group, white group, um, and but I don't, I don't really get into the. I mean, I don't want to. <clears throat> you know, you don't want Jeremiah Wright going against uh, a 210 pound walk on. So, but if if it's somebody that they're expecting to get some snaps, I don't care who they play in those groups. They're going they're going to rotate them anyway when you're in a scrimmage situation. As soon as there's a dead ball, here comes some more defensive guys. So, I, I don't know that it's. Um, that that matters so much defensively they're going to play who they play offensively you know it does a little bit more because you don't rotate offensive linemen we'll rotate some receivers but everybody else is pretty receivers and tight ends may rotate but you're going to play one or two backs and but the line is the one that really is most significant for last spring you talked about playing another school maybe troy uab have you, had, have you had discussions with other coaches about this? And I talked to Troy's coach, Parker. He was all for the idea, but he said there was too many obstacles. What are the obstacles in getting that done? Uh, to be candid, I, I would assume it's just the NCAA. I, I don't – it's just gotten no traction. Uh, and this is not the first year I've – said something like that, but I, I don't know. And I'm sure there's some coaches that are not for it too, I guess. But – uh, when we're in coaches' meetings, I don't, I don't. When I bring that up, I don't. There's nobody that really pushes back. But I don't guess we really know how to. I don't know how you convince uh, whoever the powers are be to let us say scrimmage Troy or South Alabama or UAB or whoever else. And maybe I'm just in the minority, and and it's just. Uh, but I still think it's a good idea from my perspective and. You're only playing 11 of your guys at one time, and then you truthfully probably could get more out of the day, and I think people would enjoy it more. And I also think there's an element of uh, college football could give back to the state it's in. You know, obviously Jill and I, we our heart is for the for orphan care and and foster care systems, and that's where we've always spent our charitable time. And that's kind of what my hope was when I first said this way back when I was at Ole Miss, but I just don't, it just has picked up zero traction. So I'm not optimistic that that's coming anytime soon. Uh, Coach, just seeking a little clarification on your quarterback situation. You said going into spring camp that it was Peyton's job to lose. Uh, given what you've seen so far, have the other guys caught up? And if they haven't, what can they do on Saturday uh, to, to make that jump going into? Yeah, the no, Peyton place? will Peyton will still be in the lead uh, pole position come fall camp right now, based on what we've seen this spring. Um, but I do think that the gap's not very far um, from him and and Hank and uh, Holden. Um, and again, that doesn't mean Walker's not doing well. I don't. He, he's just he's learning, but he's uh, really really talented. Um, but it, going into the fall camp is still – Peyton will be in that, that number one spot. 
You, you you guys had a lot to replace in the in the secondary, but just the guys that y'all lost. Like, how have you what how have you seen that group kind of evolve yeah. and, and improve over the course of spring? That's probably. Um, I hope it's not fool's gold. I, I mean, we obviously lost a lot back there, but uh, I, I've been really excited about uh, the progress we're seeing back there from those young guys. I think uh, Charles Kelly and and Crime Dog have done a nice job uh, with them, and you know you got a great leader in Keontae. But other than that, it's uh, it's a lot of well, Thompson's played uh, considerable snaps, but uh, of the guys we've we have here, I mean, there, there's, we're fishing to ask a lot of young guys to play a, a, some considerable snaps. Kay Lee's, I think, really, really talented. I think Tyler Scott and Colton Hood and Champ Anthony have all had really solid, solid camps. And uh, obviously Thompson, we think, can play. I think J.C. Hart has got a huge ceiling. Um, you know, he's getting better and better. So, and then at the safety spot, you know, Sylvester and, and T. Love and Caleb Wooten um, have all, you know, been really, really solid and I think getting better and better. Laquan Robinson's learning, but he's really, really talented, um, physical, just got to learn. He can get he can get on the wrong page in a hurry, but boy, he when he 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 is physical and he's what you want in a SEC safety looking. And I, I think we. Did really well with those young guys. Faustin's going to be a good player too. So Crawford also. Uh, uh, but really excited, you know, Keontae and, and Kay Lee and Colton Hood and uh, JD have done really well at those corner spots. I think Antonio Kite's coming on. Um, so I think that's probably where, if I had to say, we've made the the most um, noticeable. Improvement, that, that's probably where I would say. You mentioned a few of those guys, as a matter of fact, just a second ago. I was going to ask you about, um, we, we've heard and talked a good bit about the freshmen and the, and the incoming transfers. Are there any other guys that are returnees that, that you've seen make a move here this spring? Some of the guys that you know, uh, hadn't had a chance to play much yet. Uh, maybe not make a move, but kind of flip a switch and, and look different, approach things different, eat different. Uh, Jeremiah Wright, I mean, he's just um, really pleased with the way he's going about his business. And he's, uh, he's had a really good spring, and it's really good to see him, um, you know, take that type of mindset toward it. Um, you know, Eugene's been Eugene, and um, Keys has been solid also. Good to have Mossy in that group, very mature leader. But you pass those three linebackers, you better get them babies ready to play. <laughs> you know, they're going to have to play. And so and I like them. You know, and Demarcus Riddick is – he can run, he can cover, he's – He's really talented, and those young guys are going to have to play. And um, but uh, gosh, I'm trying to think of returners that D Wade, Braden Joiner, Braden Joiner has had a really, really solid camp. And by the way, I should have said this at the beginning. Um, I don't think he'll mind. But he lost his father last night, and that's uh, just you know, anytime you you have one of your your kids. You know, lose a loved one like that is difficult. And um, so our, our prayers and thoughts are with he and his family. But he's had a really good, really good camp. I kind of wanted to ask you about the, the uh, apparel negotiations that have been kind of a topic recently. I know that you're not directly involved in that, obviously, but I, kind of, I feel like the subject of like recruiting comes up in that a lot and what kids might want in the apparel negotiations. You're actually in those home visits. Like, is that something kids ever talk about? Is that a real thing that you've ever seen in your experience? Uh, very rare. I've, I've been at uh, a bunch of different schools and um, have had, uh, let's see, I've been a part of three different uh, apparel companies and I don't ever recall feeling like that um, made a significant difference in the uh, in the recruitment, but I'm I'm certain that it doesn't hurt in some scenarios. But um, you know we've been we've been blessed uh, by by the 
the partnerships we've had here at Auburn and at the other places, and we're thankful at every place for those those partnerships. Once A Day concludes, what is for you and the coaching staff kind of your schedule going to look like post spring through the summer as you as you surge towards August? Well, I wish they'd give us some dead periods, but um, uh, recruiting will will be ratcheted up all the way through June, it appears, you know, with this, uh, everybody seems to be taking visits earlier now, they're unlimited visits, so you're, you're trying to figure out what's real, what's not, and, um, um, you know, as far as our players here, they'll have a discretionary week and then have a couple more weeks with Dom and us, we'll take a couple hours just to, to continue to do individual instruction, but, um, then our assistants go on the road again, and now you can have contact on the road, and um, they're sti still going to be coming to campus, I'm sure, too. And um, hopefully somewhere in there you find a few days a week to play golf, at least in the afternoon, and get your mind away from it a little bit. Um, but it's, uh, you know, May is obviously discretionary for our kids here. There'll be some that work out, but we kind of let them have – that's their month to, to kind of – get away from it also um, I'll do some traveling for a collective I'm sure and and different different Auburn groups but um, we'll do all our evaluations with our players and end of the year meetings and guess what another portal opens so uh, there's no uh, I mean there's it's, it's really business as usual other than you just not having practice but everything else is going to be full go and who knows what comes with a portal opening. Um, you just don't know. And it's very, um, my wife has made me promise I'm through complaining, um, you know, but it's just, uh, it's difficult. It's difficult to manage and, um, but we're, we're going to hit it head on and, and embrace it and, and uh, try to do what's best for our roster in, in every scenario. Thank you, guys.